Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Robin Clark, I'm Medical Director for Bupa Global and UK Insurance and today I'd like to give you a brief update with regard to COVID-19, specifically around the Omicron variant. Now the Omicron variant was first detected uh, in early November 2021 and uh, it raised concern and that was initially because uh, it was identified that it was heavily mutated compared to the previous variants, particularly around the spike protein and the receptor binding domain, which is part of the spike protein. And that was important because the spike protein is the part of the virus that allows it to enter the human cells. So this variant appeared to be significantly different to the previous variants that we had encountered. Uh, it was also apparent that this new variant was spreading and spreading uh, by community transmission, so people were, were spreading it to each other. Uh, however, the early indications were that the symptoms of the Omicron variant uh, seemed to be less severe, perhaps, than the other variants that were in circulation. It's certainly still worth mentioning that the Delta variant is still the dominant strain, although with the spread of the Omicron variant, it does look like this situation will change in the near future. Talking a little bit about transmission of Omicron, and uh, Omicron does appear to have a growth advantage over Delta. And we can see that in the speed at which the Omicron case numbers are increasing. And uh, the, the Omicron is spreading faster than Delta in areas such as South Africa, where actually the, the Delta levels were relatively low, but also in the UK where the Delta levels were very high. So it does appear that actually the amount of pre-existing COVID infection is not affecting the spread of Omicron. And what we can see is in populations with high levels of immunity, whether that be vaccination or previous infection, um, it's, it's uncertain whether the spread of Omicron and its, its rapid growth is due to its ability to evade our immune system, whether it's simply because it's uh, increasingly transmissible or a combination of both of those things. However, what we can say is that whilst that spread is still occurring in the community, it is highly likely that Omicron will overtake the Delta variant to become the dominant strain in circulation. Let's talk for a moment around uh, the clinical severity and, and how dangerous Omicron is. And at the moment, we've got relatively limited data around that. So, so we don't truly know whether Omicron is less dangerous than other variants or by how much. And part of this is because of the length of time that we've been able to identify and monitor the Omicron variant. And it does take several weeks between catching coronavirus and ending up needing to access healthcare. So at the moment, we're, we're still in that learning phase. Um, so uh, effectively, we still need more data in order to understand truly what the severity profile is of Omicron versus uh, the, the other COVID variants. What we do know is that uh, in South Africa, where it was first identified, the findings were that uh, it, the, the, the symptoms from Omicron appeared to be less severe than the Delta variant. Uh, and somewhat similarly in Europe, uh, most of the cases that were recorded uh, showed mild or, or, or had no symptoms at all. Talking a little bit now about vaccines and, and vaccine efficiency. And again, uh, we, we don't have too much information here. So there's, there's limited available data and there is currently no peer reviewed evidence on vaccine effectiveness against Omicron. What we do know is that the uh, considerably different spike protein is, is certainly of note. And that in itself suggests that uh, existing vaccines are likely to be less effective against preventing infection and in reducing transmission. And that, as I said, is because the, the vaccines do target that spike protein. So if the spike protein is different, there's a likelihood that the vaccines aren't going to be as effective at targeting that spike protein. The other thing we know is that in South Africa, the reinfection rates have been increasing. So in other words, people that had an element of immunity, whether that be vac vaccination or um, uh, a previous infection uh, ended up getting infected again. So it does demonstrate to some extent that existing immunity uh, it is not the be all and end all of, of preventing, uh, preventing Omicron infection. And then finally, serum samples that have been obtained from both vaccinated and previously infected individuals when tested in the lab, uh, those samples were shown to be less effective at neutralizing the Omicron variant compared to other variants. So again, it's, it's a little bit more uh, of a piece of evidence demonstrating that perhaps Omicron is able to evade our immune system. On a slightly more positive note, uh, what the pharmaceutical companies and the vaccine manufacturers have told us is that uh, they, they believe that within a 
uh, 60 to 90 day period, they're able to uh, roll out some new vaccines that are specifically targeted against Omicron. And within that 60 to 90 day period, they should be able to uh, start some clinical testing of them. So potentially there is some light at the end of the tunnel.